thing that happens when you tattoo, you never see your own out in the wild, but everybody, I'll see everybody else's. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess that's part of like my tattoos living their own lives, I guess. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. I'll just start with one little small blip, like a little line. Okay. Um, yeah. So how did you get into tattooing? Um, I could kind of like, it happened really kind of easily, which I feel like is, I felt bad about for a while, <laughs> but um, I kind of thought about it in art school. Like I would draw things and then like, and even after art school, my friends would, like, go get it tattooed, or I'd get comments like, oh, you should tattoo. Probably, like, most people who draw get that mm -hmm. comment. Um, so I, like, thought about it. I remember talking to my sister and my mom, like, maybe I should tattoo as my, like, main, like, my job to make money, mm -hmm. and, like, then I can have an art practice, and mm -hmm. I don't have to ask a boss to, like, I need two months off or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so I was kind of, like, I think I could do it kind of thing like I learned really quickly with my hands and uh -huh. stuff like that so I was kind of like considering it but I didn't go after it because I've heard you know it's like the stereotypical thing of like um, apprenticeships being really like toxic and mm -hmm. not good and yeah not paid enough yeah and taking I, advantage of yeah yeah, and then I already went to art school, and I know sometimes you get an apprenticeship and they, like, reteach you how to draw or tell you how to draw stuff, which I, like, appreciate learning, like, how to draw stuff that makes it tattooable, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't want to, like, change my whole style and everything. Yeah, you already have the experience. Yeah, and then I didn't, I was kind of stuck in this funny spot where I'm, like, really cautious and I didn't want to just go get tattoos because I didn't know, like, who was, like, safe to go to and who wasn't and that was kind of back in 2016 2017 and before where at least in Edmonton like also there wasn't as many styles that I was interested in at the time like available like I think mm. this whole thing of um I don't know I, I call like doinky tattoo like I call my tattoos doinky but just like different styles more yeah. illustrative and stuff like kind of picked up around the same time I started, mm. like with Pansy Poke and, uh -huh. and everything. So I, I like didn't know where to go. I wasn't sure who was available in Edmonton for like a style I'd want. Um, but then I would tell people like, oh, I want a tattoo. I just like tell my coworkers. And then my friend Ren, who also tattoos, we worked together like doing retail and we we're both like, uh -huh. we both had this problem of like, we wanted to get tattooed, but we didn't know who was like nice and safe. And right. they're like, they're like trans and stuff, and they didn't know who to go to to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, like, I don't know. I feel like women have issues going to some tattoo artists. And we'd talk about it, and we're like, let's tattoo so that we can be like an option for people who um, want like a safe space tattooing, or just kind of know that we're at least not creeps or anything. Yeah. Or not gonna be like really mean. We were just gonna start doing like stick and poke out mm -hmm. of our, or hand poke out of like our homes. Um, and then I went over to their house and we did our first tattoos. Like I did my very first tattoo on them and it was hand poke and we, I, we had no idea what we were doing. Uh -huh. It was in, in their basement and their grandma was home uh -huh. <laughs> upstairs. And I was, I think I was their first person they did hand poke on. Like, they've done it on themselves, but they've never done it on somebody else, ah. I think. Um, but yeah, we were really nervous, and we didn't know what we were doing. It's kind of funny looking back on how we had things set up and <laughs> stuff. But we did it, and I, I feel like that's such a sweet memory. But then, not too long after, my coworker like got in contact with somebody who was kind of like looking for more, appren more apprentices, and they that friend like told them about me and they wanted me to apply. So I just went for it. I thought this uh, might be my only chance. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really cautious. So the idea of like hand poking out of my own home and not knowing what I'm doing is like, I don't know if I would have stuck with it cause I'm like, I'd be way too scared of like doing something wrong or like, uh, you know, I like to do things 
like properly if I can. So the idea of like learning from people who like knew what they're doing a little bit more was like appealing. So I just like took the opportunity um, and it came to me like very easily. I just sent stuff in and that's how I started. But I feel kind of bad because I have like a friend who he's tattooing now, but it took him a few tries to find an apprenticeship that yeah. like he had one and then the guy was like, oh, I don't want to like have an apprentice anymore. Hmm. He just dropped him and he had to find a new one. So sometimes it's a lot harder for other people to like get their foot in the door. So you just started with stick and poke and then eventually found an apprenticeship? Yeah, that's why I started to use like a machine and I only had done one hand poke. <laughs> so I wasn't even like what? doing it. I just done one on my friend. <laughs> and then it's like magically like the whole thing just kind of like happened. So you got to be trained and do tattooing like with an arts portfolio of illustrative work, but not necessarily a tattooing portfolio? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> the experience of getting in that easily should have been a red flag, <laughs> but I don't want to talk about <laughs> that experience. Ah. But um, <laughs> I just don't want to like dig up old stuff. But you know, it was like kind of too easy. I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't know much about tattooing. Like mm -hmm. if I had been somebody who had gotten a bunch of tattoos and talked to artists, I probably would have known like, that's too easy. Mm. And I had a funny feeling going into it too, but I was kind of like, all in, like I just got to try. Like I, there, I don't know if there would have been another opportunity for me to like start doing this as a job, even though right. like, what I went through was like, not the greatest experience personally. <laughs> but, mm. So you started with more fine arts and transitioned into tattooing, is that correct then? Yeah. When I was in art school, I um, kind of ended up making these like characters and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, my art practice is really based on my hometown and, and stuff like that and memories and nostalgia and like lots of times like grief and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I made, and also like I made tea and yeah. I don't have like a lot of information on my history mm -hmm. and I feel like sometimes on your Métis it's expected you know your whole genealogy really well mm. and where you come from but my family doesn't really talk about that too much I don't know if they right. know exactly but um like sometimes I felt very like lacking uh -huh. in my background yeah um and I didn't get to like my grandparents have stories but they didn't tell you know, it seems like there's like gaps and holes yeah, I kind of end up making this like mythology based on my hometown of like this like I, I this other world that's almost like an afterlife, uh -huh. and there's these like strange characters that are partially human and partially animal, and there's like ghosts and and things, and it's like the same thing as my hometown, the same place, but everything is a little bit different. Kind of like like the hometown I'm from. My grandpa was born there, and my like grandma and my grandfather like met in Canyon Creek, mm. in this little hamlet I'm from, and I've always thought about like how much it probably has changed over time, mm -hmm. but also like what parts have stayed the same, um, like the roads that are there, and patches of trees, like which mm -hmm. trees have been there, and even like the families that have been there for like generations. Mm. So this like after world, like second world kind of is like a mirror of um, my hometown, but kind of like the same feeling where like maybe it looked like that at one point, like the version I have has like maybe might have a road and bits and pieces of reality or like a bridge, but it's mostly like just trees and bush like before people like came and like um, lived there, I guess. Mm. But when I started tattooing, I kind of didn't want to um, start tattooing like the stuff that's really meaningful to me. And then mm -hmm. I knew when I started, I wouldn't be like the best artist, you know, mm -hmm. I have lots of room to grow. So I was like, I don't want to tattoo these things if they're going to turn out like not my best work. So I just kind of like focused on drawing kind of other things just to like practice and get better. Some of it like related, like there's some characters and of course there's lots of dogs and dogs are like a huge part of my arts practice and stuff. So it's like kind of based in there, but I draw and doodle like all kinds of stuff anyways. So mm -hmm. I just thought I'll just use the doodles that I make mm -hmm. for tattooing. Like I'm going to draw it anyways, you know, like I always grew up with lots of dogs. And then when you grow up in like, like from like a hamlet of like a couple hundred people, like 400 or mm -hmm. less or more-ish, I don't know, 
and dogs when I was growing up like run loose. It's like a gravel road town with a bar kind of thing along the highway. And so you kind of like go through a lot of dogs sometimes because sometimes they run up to the highway and they get like killed, you know. And I think uh, like with like lots of country, like rural areas, uh, yeah. that's just normal. Yeah. I have a big family. Um, yeah. And I was lucky where like nobody had passed away like my whole life, really, that I like was close to. Except uh -huh. for dogs, so, and like other animals, but dogs were, were like my first um, experience with like grief and death and mm. whatever, and like I kind of went through it like multiple times, so uh -huh. I was like used to it. So for a while I was kind of like struggling on how, I was like, how do I bring my art practice and my like tattoo practice together? Because sometimes I just draw stuff that I enjoyed. Um, and stuff that like clients uh -huh. enjoyed and it didn't really have like a I didn't like sit there and like think about it like I would with if it was like an arts practice thing like why am I doing it and you don't have time to do that when you're doing like I used to do just like one off flash <laughs> there was no time to, uh -huh. to think about everything too deeply and I was learning I, so I just kind of took time to like just focus on learning and not stress out too much about what I'm tattooing and why it uh -huh. what it means but yeah, I'm pretty sentimental and sensitive about like the characters. I know them really well and I didn't want to tattoo them on somebody and then they're like, oh yeah, this is Francis and they like smoke weed and stuff and blah, blah, blah. And they get like something added to them that like I wouldn't want, right. <laughs> you know? Because I'm like, no, she wouldn't do that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and sometimes tattooing feels a lot just like commodifying, I don't know, it's, it's like, Mm -hmm. It's part of my income, and sometimes I, I don't want these to just turn into, like, a way to make money, <laughs> or it people is. just see them as flat, like, just yeah. flash, and I, I want people to know that they're, like, very special to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, that's not to say that other stuff I've drawn for, like, the flash tattoos I've done isn't special. Like, sometimes they are, they do have meaning and slots behind it. I'll usually tell my clients if they have, like, a lot. I mean, every dog I draw is, like, related to my arts practice, too. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I really enjoy, too, about tattooing is, um, like, sometimes I'll draw a flash, and I'll really love it. I'll love it, and it, nobody, usually the ones I love the most, nobody gets for, like, forever. <laughs> they sit there for months. And I'm like, what? How come nobody wants this? It's my favorite mm -hmm. one. And then the person gets it, and it's, like, made for them. Like, it's really meaningful. Mm -hmm. It, like, fits perfectly with, like, an experience they had or a memory right. or something. And I think that's really amazing and it kind mm. of fits back into that art thing of like you release art out there and then giving up the meaning to whoever looks at it yeah it kind of like really fits in with that kind of way of thinking about art mm. i have multiple friends and i've come across multiple people with your tattoos <laughs> it's just really cool to finally be able to get that done oh, and thanks. in a in a exchange format like yeah. an art exchange format I've been um, wanting to do that for so long. It's, <laughs> it feel, it still feels wrong, you know, because like we all know many artists go to tattooing uh, not only because they want to and they're passionate about it, but because it's an actual um, form of income, right? Yeah. Um, it's cool to see, especially nowadays, um, a tattoo being done and it's like not solely a monetary thing. Yeah, that's one thing I'm yeah. trying to balance is, yeah, I, like, do this for a living, but I don't want it, it, it bums me out sometimes just thinking I'm just doing this to make money, yeah. which I'm not, and I am, but sometimes I, like, struggle with it, and I've always wanted to, like, be able to offer, like, trades, but how do you offer trades where not everybody wants to just trade, and then I can't make my, my like, I can't pay my rent. Right. <laughs> so, my name's Haley Finney, and I'm an artist from um, Lesser Slave Lake area, um, specifically Canyon Creek, and I'm a Métis artist. I tattoo and also do illustration and um, like fine art and gallery work. Oh yeah, I'm also a core member of Otsitsiwan. With my illustration work, or not illustration work, my work's really illustrative, um, and I kind of use that with in my work because I deal with kind of sometimes like heavier topics like grief and stuff where I'm process processing those topics like mm -hmm. grief, mourning, changing, nostalgia, stuff like that. 
Um, and I find like doing something in an illustrative, friendly way, I kind of have this approach of like a kid's show, like dealing with these difficult topics in a way that's really like inviting and friendly, helps you feel more comfortable. And then for tattooing, I'm also pretty illustrative. Um, but I think tattooing, I'm like more recently kind of trying to work with it in, as my art practice. One of the main things that I find really interesting is just the fact that they're like impermanent, even though they're permanent, like they're on people's bodies and they live, they get to live like full lives and change with their bodies and age and grow and they might like stretch and stuff, but eventually they'll go all on with like the person when they pass away and they're like very impermanent and it's nice that they live a life and then they're gone. I think tattooing should be, uh, yeah, more, more seen as like what it is. It's like a, uh -huh. it's part of all art. <laughs> and it has so much history, like we can't just ignore all the history of tattooing just because it doesn't fit into like what, I don't know who decided it's not fine art or like not mm -hmm. important to that world. There's so much like, yeah, care. Sometimes it can be like a ritual. It can mm -hmm. be like a ceremonial thing, really personal or it can be broad. Like there's so many ways to think about tattooing and like reasons why people do it. Like, I don't know if any other people that have been interviewed are tattoo artists or like tattoo as part of their practice, mm -hmm. but I feel lucky that I get to be kind of one of them to maybe to like change people's minds about what tattooing is. Right. Um, it might kind of like bring, like make people think about tattooing differently, that it can be more fine arts or that you can think of it differently than just like a picture on somebody's body or something.